वेलकम बैक टू द शो आप सबका स्वागत है डिप्रेशन एक साइलेंट किलर माने जाता है क्योंकि कोई भी व्यक्ति को एनी टाइम हो सकता है आज हम बात करेंगे मैनफ्रीड डिलन से जो एक लाइफ कोच है एक सक्सेस कोच है Manfred, welcome to the show. Thank you, Janita. So I understand that uh, you yourself are a success coach. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, as a success coach, what I do is help um, ethnic women um, who want to move to the next level of their career and business, um, but looking at their mindset, mm -hmm. looking at what emotions might be holding them back. Um, a lot of the times we suffer grief or we suffer depression right. or we suffer um, some, so a lot of people I've talked about, um, I talked to have suffered abuse. So how that impacts their success and how they impacts how they live their life of passion and really feeling fulfilled. So I work with them to move through all those emotions so that they can have more success in career and business. So speaking of depression, I mean, it's I understand it's really hard to diagnose. So what is depression exactly? Well, I can talk about it from my personal experiences and how I've seen it. Um, depression is a mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, it's a way there's a chemical imbalance in the brain where your brain's not firing out the same levels that it used to before. Mm -hmm. um, and so what people, how they act out might be that they sleep a lot. Um, they might seem flaky where they're not, uh, they don't show up onto their commitments. Um, or they just um, are not happy, um, even though everything else might seem great, like the family life, everything might be working out really, really well, but inside they feel like their wor world is so many problems that they can't tackle it. Um, and they don't even want to get up in the mornings a lot of the times. So those are just like the common day-to-day -day signs. Um, mm -hmm. it, is, uh, it, it is medically treatable, um, and a lot of people will take medications for it, but there's such a, when people hear the word depression, they think of them as, of, of others as way, there's something wrong with them, yes. but really there's not. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you must have met a lot of people that have, a lot of women, strong career-oriented women that are depressed. So how, how does somebody know that they're depressed? It's about, um, you know, sometimes they're feel, facing a lot of stress. They feel like they're always constantly stressed out and they're not really sure of why. Mm -hmm. um, and they might get anxiety attacks or they might get panic attacks. Um, they might be looking at their life and they're just, um, and they see that there's, everything looks okay, but they're like, why am I not feeling fulfilled? Why am I not feeling that, um, why am I not feeling right. satisfied? Uh, and also other times mm. that they might never, it might be affecting their relationships. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone might love them so much, but they're just not feeling it because they can't love themselves. Right. And so it's, you know, it's simple signs are like, as I mentioned, like sleeping a lot or they're not fatigue. able to be fatigue. They're not meeting their goals. Um, mm -hmm. They're not meeting their deadlines because time doesn't matter. Um, nothing really seems to matter to them. And as much as they're working really hard, they're not seeing the success mm -hmm. that they want. So. So, I mean, like there's, for example, recently there was a uh, uh, Deepika Padukone, who's a massive Bollywood of superstar, course, yeah. she just came forward with her story about how she's been battling depression and that. I mean, uh, you look at this amazingly successful and beautiful career-oriented woman, and suddenly she's battling depression. I mean, it makes you wonder, like, how many others are, are could this possibly be affecting? Oh, completely. So if you know, you, there is a career, a career oriented, a strong minded person who seemingly has it all. I mean, inside their world might very well be crumbling. What can people do if they feel this type of situation? Um, the first thing, there's different avenues. Um, so the first thing is going to a doctor and getting them, getting properly diagnosed. Actually getting your vitamin levels checked, getting all your hormone levels checked. Because sometimes it's just really a physical issue. Mm -hmm. And it's not really that you're facing depression as a mental illness, but it's a side effect of something else that's going on with your body. Right. So always getting the professional help first. Um, I'm a big advocate of counselors and psychologists because I feel that we all have things that we haven't dealt with. Um, and sometimes we need that medical attention in order to deal with those issues. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to go and get access to those types of helps. There's employee family assistance programs through, uh, uh, through your workplace as well, where you're not even paying for the counseling. Oh, so it's like government funded. Government funded. And your work, workplace, your benefits will cover it. Extended and health benefits. Ex extended health, right, yes. Right, right. And um, other ways is surrounding yourself with a really a people that you feel connected to. Mm -hmm. That always helps. Um, and also there's, I mean, if you go to a naturopath, they have natural methods that if you don't want to take medication, they have natural ways they can deal with it. Mm -hmm. But I always suggest going to a professional, uh, going to the medical system first and getting your blood test done mm -hmm. to really properly get diagnosed. And so, I mean, basically getting properly diagnosed because anybody could be 
tired. Yeah. You know, and it, you're right, it could be a, a possible vitamin deficiency where you're just not Completely. feeling the energy. And it may not necessarily be depression. But, I mean, speaking to uh, depression, I mean, like, we we're, were talking about um, second generation That's earlier. Right. And, uh, you know, people that were born here and they were raised here mm -hmm. and they're being educated up here, you don't realize that the societal pressures of having to conform to your culture and then being a Canadian. So can you speak a little bit to that? Oh, completely. Like a lot of the clients that I deal with, um, because they are the strong, very confident, career-oriented women who manage the work-life balance, um, and they're not they have, you know, they've had battles with depression before, and they're just, they've come out of the uh, d depression, but it's still affecting them on a day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. um, but it really, a lot of it is because they feel pressures from family. They feel that they can't have a certain, you know, they want to succeed in the career workplace and get to like the high-level right. positions, but they don't feel the support. And so that, there's an internal battle there because they're always balancing between being South Asian and being Western and what that looks like for them and how that's going to impact them on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. And so a lot of the times that's where, you know, they might have depression signs because they're trying to balance between these different lifestyles of they want something different right. um, and they're found, they don't see examples of that in their lifestyle, in their life right now and they don't have role models that way. So you yourself have also battled depression yeah. and uh, you've come out of it. So would you be able to tell us about your, your success story? How did you pull, up, pull through? Completely. Um, and so three years ago, I left my you know, really amazing job uh, because I was burnt out. And I was like, I thought I was just burnt out. I didn't realize I had depression. I was like, oh, I'm just feeling, I've been working way too much, not really, didn't realize it was depression. And I mean, everything always happens for a reason. And so a year later, once I finally, like the doctor was like, okay, you can go back to work um, because she's like, you have, you're not, ha you don't have the signs of depression anymore. I still thought she was lying. I didn't, <laughs> didn't think that the doctor was telling me the truth that I had depression. Um, and then my brother passed away. And then all of a sudden the signs started coming back again. I was sleeping right. a lot. I was, I didn't, I didn't want to follow through commitments. Um, I would only surround myself with like a very select few people. Right. Um, who had, and others I loved, but I had to let go of a lot of friendships because I just, they didn't understand what I was going through. Of course. And just in the last um, little while, I found ways of surrounding myself with people that I would have really positive conversations with. Mm -hmm. I actually threw myself into work. Um, in the sense of like I threw myself into what I'm passionate about of helping other people so I was working on projects that would you know like the the Taha Prize for um, Punjabi literature I started working on that because I was helping people live their passion and that really ignited something new inside of me right. um, I started focusing more on r doing seminars where I'm doing like helping a group of women to the next level and, and I'm just gonna cut you off there yeah. and I'm just I think that this is a really interesting topic um, when yeah. we uh, we're just gonna take a short break okay. but when we come back let's hear a little For bit sure. more about this okay Financial problems to family life ਸਮਝ <laughs> हमारी बात चल रही थी मैनफ्रीड डिलन से जो एक सक्सेस कोच है वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट डिप्रेशन मैनफ्रीड सो यू वर टेलिंग अस अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट ऑल दिस दिस थिंग्स दैट यू वर डूइंग विद योर योर वर्क इन ऑर्डर टू हेल्प टू पुल यू बैक आउट ऑफ डिप्रेशन सो इलैबोरेट अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट दैट फॉर मी व्हाट आई रियलाइज्ड व्हाई आई थ्रू माय सेल्फ इनटू द वर्क दैट आई वाज डूइंग वाज बिकॉज़ इट मेड मी फील अलाइव it made me feel I had purpose in life again. And it made me realize that there was a future for me. Mm -hmm. um, before I had kind of lost the hope that, um, well, like, what am I doing here on earth? You know, and it was one of those questions of, you know, I'm, you know how am I gonna be contributing to the world? Right. And so this work that I was doing where I was helping a lot of other people um, really allowed me to realize that I had a purpose here on earth that I was able to help others. And I'm able to, mm -hmm. the more, every time I saw someone smile, or I saw someone, um, they got one of their dreams realized, or they're just like, oh, I, I got to do this because of you. It made me, I was like, oh, I do have a reason here for, for being here. And that helped me, pull, pulled me out of the depression as well. I also changed my mm -hmm. diet, like how I ate. Mm -hmm. I changed, um, you know, drinking lots of water. That made a huge impact. I'm um, just eating natural foods. 
Um, but also it was really just every day being grateful for everything that I had mm -hmm. and everything that was around me. So I have a morning ritual that I follow every day that um, really focus my mind on all the positive things right. and help me kind of realize that I was like, I have so much given to me already. Mm -hmm. And I just need to, if I continue to focus on that, I don't focus on the negative anyways. Right. So, I mean, basically what you said is you, you were able to connect with your passions and yeah. your goals. So how important is goal setting and, you know, doing those small things, those that, that make you happy on a, you know, you, regardless of how small they may be, how important is that in the healing process? Completely. Because every moment that you have a little bit of happiness impacts your mindset for hours. Mm -hmm. So, and even for days. Because that one moment, it kind of sparks that in, inner um, strength inside of you that everyone has already. Mm -hmm. And that happiness is already, it's part of a lot of people. And it's just about uncovering it mm -hmm. and just being tapped into it on a daily basis. Right. And so it was really important in the healing process because the more and more time I spent there, the more I was able to do more things that made me happy. And it was, it was like a compound effect. Mm -hmm. I was kind of always doing things that kept making me happy, adding something on that kept making me happy. So then I didn't so even like get problems. The level goes, goes up, up and, and up, up and up. Yeah, yeah. completely. So, I mean, like, doing in doing so, I know that you've traveled the world and you've gone on a lot of work projects. You were mentioning yeah. a little bit about your work and your, your passions there. So, take us through that journey of yours. Uh, well, it was... Um, and, and your mindset, really. My, yeah, so when I left um, my job, um, I was down in the dumps. Um, I honestly didn't know what I was going to do next because my job was my identity. I was, um, I mean, I had a really amazing position that I loved, but I just wasn't happy. Right. And I just knew that I was not feeling good and mm -hmm. I was always stressed out. It was affecting my relationships. Um, I actually sacrificed my uh, being in a romantic relationship for it. Uh, my body was hurting, like everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I left. Um, and, and so ended up, You felt like you were imploding. Imploding, completely. Um, I didn't even know how I was going to make And on the a outside, nobody knew. No, Because no there's nothing knew. physically wrong. Yeah, everyone thought I was, I was having an amazing lifestyle. Um, they're like, oh, you get to travel, you get to have all these friends, you get to go all these events. But every time I'd come home, I'd feel really lonely. And I just cried mm -hmm. myself to sleep. And, or I'd just sleep for days and no one knew that I was sleeping for days. They thought I was busy. And then I started to think, I'm like, wait a second, if I'm always busy and people think I'm busy, what if something happened to me? No one would know. Right. Because no one, I'm not letting people close to me, um, to, connected to me. And so then I went to, um, then my, when my brother passed away, he really inspired me to really live my passion. So I started saying Good. yes to everything. And I started, all the goals that I had for years, all of Good. a sudden I was able to achieve them because I was just like, nope, I'm going to take that opportunity. I'm going to take that opportunity. And it was just, I became, and my brother really inspired that because he had a really zest for life. Mm -hmm. And throughout the one year after his passing, I actually thrived so much. I th and that's why my story in the Chicken Soup for the Soul um, that's getting published next month, it's called Thriving While Grieving. Um, it's all about how, it's about tapping into the, your heart and just doing what feels right all the time. And it's all about doing, um, you know, even though you might be feeling so, such bad emotions, it's about doing what feels right and what you know that should be right, even though it doesn't make sense, and just doing it so you have a life that's more... So you're following your dreams, dreams and it's yeah. more fulfilling for yeah, you. Yeah, completely. And so you're now, just following your heart. This story you said is going to be published in Chicken Soup for the Soul. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. There's 100 million copies worldwide, you know, 43 languages. We wish you the best of luck with that. Thank honestly. you. Honestly, that's, that's an amazing feat. Thank you so much. Th thank you for joining us and for sharing your story. We do appreciate it. Thank you for having me on the show.